Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine coming to you today with the weekly podcast on the Common Sense MD. I want to talk about something that I've taken a deep dive on recently, something I'm very interested in, and it's very important for your health, especially your heart health, but everything else. I'm going to talk about nitric oxide. Now, let me begin with a quote that was made about 300 years ago by the famous English physician, Dr. Thomas Sydenham. He observed that a man is as old as his arteries, and I firmly believe that. So we're going to be talking about something today called nitric oxide that's actually a gas produced in the lining of all your arteries that has so much to do with how long you live and how healthy you are, how you breathe, how your brain functions, whether or not you're going to have a heart attack, whether or not you're going to get buildup and rupture of plaque. Um, your life depends on it. And it's one of those things that as we age, it decreases. Just like our hormones, nitric oxide decreases as we age. We actually need more of it as we age. So that's a cruel irony of life, isn't it? But So I'm going to tell you at the end of this podcast how, what things you can do to increase your nitric oxide production, which you, will make you feel better and make you live longer and healthier. But first, let's get some details out of the way. Because it's kind of complex, it's a lot of biochemistry, I'm going to try to make it simple um, because you, you're talking about nitrates, nitrites, nitric oxide. First of all, let me get this out of the way. Nitrous oxide is laughing gas. This has nothing to do with nitrous oxide. We're talking about nitric oxide. And it really starts with nitrate, which you get in your food for the most part, mostly, mostly vegetables, but it's also produced inside your arteries. But um, nitrate has three oxygen um, molecules. Then it degrades to nitrite, which has two oxygen molecules, NO2, which degrades to nitric oxide, which is very important. And nitric oxide is good. Now, when nitrites degrade to nitrosamines, those are bad. You think about that from cooking meat at high levels. And you think of that form of nitrosamines in hot dogs and, um, you know, luncheon meats, things that are very bad for you. Uh, there's, so don't burn your meat. I'm always talking about not cooking at such a high heat. Um, so don't burn it. Other bad things happen when you burn your meat as well, like hydrocarbons are released and uh, heterocyclic amines, things that are very carcinogenic. So we're not talking about these. So you need nitric oxide, and it decreases as you age. Um People obtain nitri nitric oxide basically in two ways. It's ingested in, through your food, mostly vegetables. Um, or, and really when you do that, it's through the action of an enzyme that called nitric oxide synthase, uh, which catalyzes L-arginine to produce it. Um, so when you put it, when you get it from your food, the nitrate is reduced to nitrite by bacteria in your mouth. It has a salivary pathway. Uh, so in the, over the next several hours, some of the nitrite is further reduced to nitric oxide in the gut. And these enzymes in the gut also uh, convert it to nitric oxide, which you need. That's important because when you exercise... Um, when lactic acid builds up in your body, um, in your muscles, um, the nitric oxide, which I want to term NO, uh, improves the contraction of your muscles and generates energy by your mitochondria, um, which improves oxygenation, also dilates blood vessels, which improves uh, everything in life. Um, so we're talking about mitochondrial health, which produces energy, and we're talking about 
vasodilation of your blood vessels. And that, think about um, some of the things that do that. Like if you went to the ER with chest pain, they'd give you nitroglycerin. That's, that's what it is. It, it dilates your coronary arteries and prevents you from dying, can prevent you from dying of a heart attack. Um, think of Viagra and Cialis. What they do is promote the release of nitric oxide to uh, dilate the vessels uh, in your genitals. So um, it helps erectile dysfunction. So those are some of the more practical things. But nitric oxide is actually the most potent anti-inflammatory in the body. So you need to really um, think about how to increase your nitric oxide. And there are several ways to do this. Um, like I said, food's the first way. The second way is how it's produced in your own endothelium. And you can screw that up by um, everyday living, which I'll talk about in, in a little bit. But nitric oxide is a really unstable gas that degrades quickly in your bloodstream. So it needs to be constantly replenished. Um, so to stabilize that nitric oxide, you need antioxidants that will neutralize the free radicals, which break it down. So eating a lot of green leafy vegetables, uh, vitamin C, vitamin E, polyphenols, and glutathione, which is the mother of all antioxidants. And we'll talk about glutathione in another podcast, but it's very important and it's, it's hard to get it to work in your body. Um, that's another day. Um, so the nitrates and vegetables are very good. Um, and like I say, the sodium nitrates that act as preservatives in food and also act as a color preservative uh, for bacon and cold cuts and, and hot dogs, um, th those form nitrosamine, and you don't want those. So, and, and you know, you think about bodybuilders using nitric oxide like NO2 explode. I used to take that years ago. Turns out it's, it's not that really powerful to help you really form the kind of NO that you need. Um, and it turns down that L-citrulline is a much better amino acid than L-arginine if you want to take it as a supplement because the L-arginine really breaks down very quickly in your digestive system before it gets to your blood. So L-citrulline is definitely a better product uh, than L-arginine, although L-arginine does play a part, like I said before. Um, but things that you can take for this, you know, it's, it's real complex. And I, in going through a deep dive with this, it's very confusing. You know, you gotta, you gotta really take a deep dive. A lot of the information I got came from Dr. Nathan Bryan. And he, he's a PhD scientist who's been studying nitric oxide for like 20 years. Um, he's worked with Nobel prize, uh, laureates and he's a real famous guy in the nitric oxide world and he he has some good products and some good information on why most supplements for this really just don't work by themselves at least um but it's it's odd because you know you think of medicines like viagra and cialis and about 50 percent of the the men that have erectile dysfunction those medicines won't work it's, it's because they're not producing enough nitric oxide. So the, the Viagra and Tadalafil, Cialis, work downstream. You, when, in that case, you need to work upstream, and that's by getting your body to produce more nitric oxide. Um, so, and, and you can really measure the effects of when you try to take some of these supplements to boost it by measuring... Uh, your oxygen saturation in your blood, something we did for every COVID patient. And by the way, you can use some of these nitric oxide supplements, boosters, to treat COVID as well. Um, you know, Dr. Brian actually went to, I think it was Indonesia, and actually gave out a million dollars worth of this stuff to help COVID patients because it does improve oxygenation. Um, but anyway, so you can measure it and kind of follow it. 
Um, you can actually measure your saliva to see how much nitric oxide you're producing. There's a test strip that uh, you can use to see that and follow just to see where these supplements uh, can take you. But you can also measure uh, blood markers like CRP and triglycerides um, to see how you're doing on this by taking this supplement. Again, the, the best way to live is to is to eat right, exercise, sleep, but you know it's it's very hard to do um, in today's world. And there's a lot of stuff working against you with this nitric oxide production. The most famous one is probably mouthwash. I think t- something like 200 million Americans use mouthwash on a daily basis, and what it does is actually destroy the good bacteria in your saliva that converts. Um, this into nitric oxide that you get from your food. So mouthwash is definitely something that you don't want to do. Other things that can take it down are antacids, especially PPIs. Smoking, uh, antibiotics can can really interfere with this. Uh, Poor lifestyle, sedentary lifestyles can do this. So, um, you know, you can... You can definitely measure this stuff and kind of track it and see how you see how you feel. And these supplements that I'm going to talk about are really, I mean, they really work. There was a study out of Indiana University this year. This was a double-blind placebo-controlled trial where they used beetroot juice. And again, that's one of the major forms of uh, NO production is beetroot root juice. Um, Anyway, in this in this fairly large study, they 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 gave to athletes just beetroot juice without anything else, and at the end of it, they determined that the athletes that used that had a five percent increase in uh, muscle power, and even a greater increase, double that in uh, aerobic exercises like cycling. So it definitely. Uh, a five percent, five to ten percent increase in athletes is an amazing jump. So for older adults, you know, it's even more amazing at what it can do for you. Um, so it it really could help you with everyday task and recovery from everything from muscle soreness to brain function. Uh, besides taking it for your heart health and and your brain health, um, but so. Um, the supplements that the Olympic Committee um, say can boost performance that are legal, but there's no way for them to really track it, are, are really five things. And the first one is definitely beets. Then there's caffeine, there's creatine, there's beta alanine, and there's sodium bicarbonate, all recognized to have performance enhancing. Uh, properties that are legal even for Olympic athletes so for your average person you definitely need these Um, so what can you do besides eat well and don't use mouthwash and you know don't don't take a lot of antibiotics don't take uh, antacids um, get plenty of sleep take your antioxidants there's some things you can do to raise this certainly something that that I've been doing Uh, and, and when you go through the the weeds on this, there's a couple points I want to make, and there's a couple companies that I think are, are pretty good that you can go on the Internet and get them. Um, one of them that I like is uh, from Berkeley Life. They're capsules. You can take a couple a day, and they have a pretty um, long half-life, so I guess that's the advantage of taking that. But I do something a little bit different. Um, one thing that I take and I think is pretty good are lozenges because I want it to kind of interact with that saliva. And then I want something more long acting because the uh, lozenges work probably a couple hours and you still want that boost for 16 to 18, 18 hours downstream. So I take a combination and I like the Cirque O2 uh, lozenge. It has nitric oxide in it. It has sodium nitrite. It has magnesium. It has L-citrulline, which, remember, I said I like that better than L-arginine. 
has a high dose of beetroot. So you have to know with this beet, beetroot if you're really getting enough beetroot juice in there. And most of them just don't have enough to, to make a difference. It has vitamin C, B12, and hawthorn, which is another great product I've endorsed for heart health for years. Um, so I like the Cirque O2 lozenges, and I like the Berkeley uh, Life uh, capsules, and I just take one of each. Uh, I take a, a lozenge in the morning, and a couple hours later, I'll take the longer-acting capsule. So I think that's a couple. That's a couple ways to do it. But any good product like this that's going to help you. And again, some people, if you're really young and healthy, you're probably not going to notice a lot of difference. But if you're aging, or if you're an athlete, that will notice just a little bit of change, five to ten percent. 10% improvement, you're going to notice that whether you're running or cycling or rowing or lifting weights. Um, I think there's a lot of advantages to this for the athlete as well as uh, a person getting older and wants to stay athletic and stay um, healthy and protect your heart. That's the main reason you're doing this is to protect your arteries because your arteries are your health and not just your heart, but blood supply to all the organs and your brain. So think about uh, nitric oxide. Uh, it's very important for your health, longevity, and any questions, come to the office, uh, and we'll be glad to check some of your markers and give you some advice. Thank you. This is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine. Mm -hmm.